in the near future. Um, before we get started, or as we get started, I'm going to ask everybody, all of our panelists, to please introduce yourselves. But while you're doing so, I think it might be a good time to get to know you or let everybody who's watching get to know you. So maybe introduce yourself and talk a little bit about what your life has been like since COVID first hit, so we can get a sense of you know who you are and where you are and how things have been. Maybe Angela, we'll start with you. Great. Thank you, Haley. So excited to be here, and thank you for uh, asking me to participate. Um, my name is Angela Zapeda. I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Hyundai Motor America, based here in Southern California. I'm coming to you live from my home in Long Beach, California, which is where I have worked every day since uh, March 20th, like many people out there. And, you know, um, what an amazing time we're all going through um, and how different everything has really changed from those first early days um, as we headed into March to where we are today. But life, you know, has been extremely busy. Um, much of it feels a lot of, of just the same life I had from before. Um, we all got really fast on how to use Zoom and how to connect. Um, but, you know, working for a global company and the U.S. being the largest market for Hyundai, we have been working very, very hard, very long hours every day, um, just trying to maneuver this entire global environment and what it means for us to uh, keep first everyone healthy and safe and learn how to work in a new way and yet keep, you know, business going as usual. And um, I'm lucky I, I live in a, a home. We have a yard. I live in Southern California. Our weather has been pretty, I mean, we had some rain at the beginning. Uh, my husband's here with me. So I, I haven't had to have a difficult struggle with what life would be like, you know, sheltering in place. And so um, and it's been nice in the last couple of weeks to get a little bit back to normal. Um, but for the most part, um, you know, it's been a lot of work. And actually, I think people have said this too, a lot, lot more work than maybe even from before. So um, just doing it in a new way. But I feel connected and I feel um, like I see people and, you know, I'm just trying to make the best of it. So that would be my experience so far. That's great. And we'll we'll get into the details of what a lot more work means. But how many times did you find yourself going, what did I do with my time before I, I was sat in place all day long, right? Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Leslie, what's good to you? Um, thanks. And thanks, Haley. And it is great to join all of you on the panel here and everybody out there. Uh, Leslie Gillen, I am the Chief Marketing Officer of J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, I've been in this role for a little under four and a half months um, and started two weeks before COVID. So talk about a trial by fire virtual um, style. But um, yeah, similar to Angela, um, and I'm actually coming to you from uh, Avalon, New Jersey. And here, why not in the summer um, to be able to spend it at the beach? Um, one of the benefits of virtual. Um, but similar to Angela, like a lot of that resonated with me. I'm sure it resonates with everybody. Um, it actually it has been busier than ever. Um, and even though we've cut our commute times, um, uh, actually, I find one of the challenges and, and one of the things that I'm extremely conscious about as it relates to, to the team is trying to separate work from home and, and making sure that you know, people can turn off. Um, I think we've all had to respond in real time as it relates to our customer needs um, and, and insecurities and and uh, real moments of, of un, you know, being una unaware of what's next. And um, so similar again uh, to what Angela was saying, I think it's learning virtual like Zoom and Jabber and Blue Jeans and trying to, and, and also the agility of how we're working uh, and being a lot more real time and staying uber focused um, on, on fewer things and doing them bigger, faster, I think would be my experience. But um, last thing I would say is, I do get to spend more time um, having dinner at night with my three children, uh, which is an amazing um, up, upside. So it is true. It's not a myth that you actually do learn a lot of things when you sit down and have conversations versus sitting at the kitchen island five minutes in and out of room. So that's been a big benefit. That's right. Thank you. I can't, I mean, four months in and just two weeks in and starting the, starting the job and then uh, and it's all happening. But you're right. Trial, trial by fire for sure. Someone said to me, don't forget, you know, this won't last forever, um, but things can always get worse. I'm like, well, is which is it? <laughs> right. Anyway, it's great to have you. Maria. Thank you so much. Um, so happy to be here with everyone. 
Yeah, it's been, um, I think it's been an interesting experience for everyone, right? We've all, I think, uh, in many ways have had very similar experiences. I was scheduled to go to Argentina on March 15th on spring break with my two daughters, um, taking my eldest for her graduation gift. And needless to say, like on the 13th of March, we had to just come to the realization that we needed to cancel. That it just was not going to be possible. So, you know, navigating disappointing kids, thinking you're about to be away on vacation. And rather than be away on vacation, you're dealing with, um, you know, all that goes into trying to figure out how do you have an entire team be working from home, um, dealing with, you know, clients who are trying to navigate and figure out what they're going to do from an advertising perspective and um, and at the same time, you know, just, you know, lead a team, et cetera. Um, I didn't start off by saying what I do. I'm the, I'm the CMO of the advertising division at Comcast. Um, so I work on all of the ad sales side of Comcast. And so we, you know, clearly have worked really closely with a, with a lot of clients just trying to navigate what this, um, what this means for their marketing, their advertising, switching ads, et cetera. And at the same time, um, thinking about from a brand perspective, what our brand message is, et cetera, all the things that normally kind of go into kind of traditional brand marketing. Um, so it's been it's been an interesting an interesting transition. I think you know traditionally, um, I'm used to being able to you know have my home life be my home life, and then I and I go to work and I focus on work. Now everything is so intertwined. My my day starts with my children asking me what time is my first call and my last call, um, so that you know they kind of can gauge when they can have time with me. Um, and so doing that and juggling that has been a challenge. But just as Leslie said, um, there's so many gifts to it. There's so many gifts to being I, it's the, probably the most I've been home and not traveled in years. Um, and so there have been so many gifts, lots of lessons learned. Um, and I think uh, I think we're all kind of going through it in a similar way. I think that's right. I love the point that you're making about gifts, because I do say to my children every day, this time with you is such a gift because there's no world where we would typically, I mean, even if even if we were home for some reason, they would be in school. And so um, so it is kind of amazing to take a minute and think, wow, this is a little bit of a gift. How do I spend some time reflecting on that and view this time as that? Because it's important. Thank you for sharing. Shade, tell yeah, us about this. I completely agree with all of that. Uh, my name is Shade Vaughn. That is my real name. I had hippie parents. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dad was an artist, um, and I'm the chief marketing officer for North America for Capgemini. Uh, Capgemini is a professional services uh, company. Uh, we have 270,000 employees around the world in over 50 countries, and we really help companies bring together their business and their IT strategy. Um, and it's a it's a great business to be in right now. Um, for me personally, the, the change has been pretty significant. I used to be on the road constantly, um, nearly every week. And so just having this time with my kids, I have two small kids and uh, have that time with my wife has been uh, amazing. It's been tremendous. I mean, I, I share uh, some of the same comments that, that have already been said about the fact that we all are feeling overworked and stressed and everything that's going on externally impacts that. And all of our team feels that, all of our organization feels that and certainly our clients feel that way. And I, I guess the key point that I would want to make is I, I had a really meaningful conversation with our CEO right after we shut down all travel and we talked about the importance of leadership in a situation like this. And um, and it's so true in that none of us have been through this before, not this exact situation. And we talked about a lot as a marketing team at Capgemini, the fact that the business right now needs cool headed, very rational um, advice on what we need to do. And as we talk about how we change our, our marketing mix and our model and our investments, our messaging and how we interact with our people, it really revolves around just being crystal clear about sticking close to your purpose, um, being very uh, straightforward about what we're here to do, which is create value for our clients, which are ultimately, you know, CEOs, CIOs, CMOs, and really connecting with them in a way that that is about them and about creating value in their lives, both their professional lives, but also in the communities that they operate in. And I, I really preach that with our team that no matter your, your, whether you're fairly entry level, you're mid-level, you're a senior executive on our team, 
your job in every single team meeting that you're on with your business stakeholders is to say, guys and, and ladies, let's calm down. Let's, let's, let's think about this in a way that we're very clear about what our goals are, how do we get there, and let's be smart about it. Um, from a marketing perspective, a lot of our, our focus is on events and trade shows, and obviously that's not happening now. So we put a lot of a big shift into digital marketing and campaigns, but most importantly, messaging that's designed to reach people in the right context of where they are today. Yeah, thank you for that. You touched on so many things. And I think the the overarching point here is that we're all experiencing so much change at a rate that we could never have foreseen. And in particular, when you are in a leadership position or just a position where you've got people underneath you looking to you to help understand what to do? How should I feel? How should I be reacting? How should I be acting? Like, how do I spend my time? There is a tremendous amount of, of pressure, if you will, um, really to kind of be that standard bearer. And one of the things that we keep hearing or people kind of keep bringing up in various ways is the need to um, let yourself as a leader be vulnerable or let people understand that actually you don't have all the answers. So I'm going to kick it back to you for a second, Shade, and ask you, you know, how much have you said to your team, I don't know, but actually this is what I might do. And then for all of you, you know, just for anybody who wants to jump in, how important do you see that as being and how much has your team kind of taken to that approach if in fact that's been your approach? Yeah, so it is a great example, a sort of self-deprecating story about this. When So when the, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement really came out, there was a, we had a text message between myself and our head of talent and our CEO about what, what should we be saying, what's the right message. And I felt very strongly that none of our, very few of our employees would be sitting at home wanting to know what our CEO thought about this. It just didn't strike me as a business conversation. And... Uh, after a lot of back and forth, we eventually did put out an internal statement from him uh, and just got overwhelming, tremendous feedback about how meaningful and important it was. And I, I called up uh, our head of talent and I apologized for the fact that I was pushing back on that. I didn't think it was the right time or place. Clearly it was. And then I had a conversation with our CEO and I said to him, I feel I've done a lot of soul searching here and I feel like I let you down. I should have seen that this was a place where we needed to get you out front and center as quickly as we can with a leadership message for our people. And I shared that same story with our with our marketing team. And it was very interesting to me to see the difference in feedback. Some of the the very the entry level um, grades A's and B's on our team were like, "Yeah, you idiot." I mean, that's exactly the sort of thing that we need leadership to be out and talking about. Whereas some of the more senior leaders said, you know, I, I agree. I saw a, a study that said only 18% of CMOs thought that their brand needed to be out commenting on social movements. And, I, I you know, for, for those of us, I'm 43, I've been in the game a fair amount of time, that feel like it's not the right place for a company to be speaking out, times are changing. And it's, it's a really important uh, time for all of us to take stock of what we don't know and be be upfront about it. And and I've I've as a result of that, I added uh, two of our our entry level people to our marketing leadership team so that we can get that constant feedback of of what right. needs to happen. Because I I don't I don't know. You know I've been living in the suburbs for the last ten years. <laughs> I think I would add to that. I think that thank you for sharing that story. I think that illustrates probably the best I've heard yet on how difficult a lot of this has been to maneuver. And we have two, we're, Hyundai is a Korean owned company. It's based in Seoul, Korea. And we have two phrases we use around uh, our place, which is Pali Pali and Miri Miri. And one is long-term planning. The other is, nope, do it fast. We have to make some choices today. And, you know, COVID in some ways almost feels like it was a lot easier to maneuver um, because we all had this shared experience. It was a global situation. Um, of course, we'd watched Korea early on, um, had some early footsteps to follow in, and we did, we did a lot as a company. We did programs to help our dealers. We did programs to help our owners and our customers. Um, we you know, wanted to protect um, all of our employees from staying healthy. Uh, we were very concerned about uh, cash is king, that's what our CEO always says about saying, staying very financially solvent through this time as we, you know, you didn't know what the end of the, the story was going to be. And so all those things were, were difficult, 
But I think to your point, Shade, when we then moved into um, the terrible death of you know George Floyd and then the protests, and for me personally, I, I felt like this was an inflection point. And what do we do as a brand? You know, Hyundai is a, a company that really cares about its people. It's part of our core values. Our head of diversity and inclusion is a gentleman named Safara Brooks, which, who was already doing amazing work with um, not just the African-American community, although that was heavy, but we also had, you know, heavy um, influence with the um, LGBTQ community and women's community. We have all these employee resource groups and suddenly it was like, how do we, how do we highlight the importance of what's happening right now with social injustice and Black Lives Matter, but also not alienate any other group? And when it really came down to it, we felt like we had to just address what was happening with Black Lives Matter and the protest. Our CEO also wrote a letter internally. We had an all employee call. Um, about a week later, there was a smaller group that wanted to speak with him directly, and he and he was great. He, you know, let's have an open door discussion. Let's hear what you want to see our company do next. And so that's the new commitment: is we are not a perfect company, and we had to say what will we do next to help um, move forward. But we had to all say we didn't really know what was the best choice. We had to come up with that decision together, and it took us a little more time, honestly, to feel like we had the right decision for our company. It, it was not as I would say intuitive only because there were just a lot of voices that had a lot of opinions and much of it emotional, which was totally understandable. Um, so anyway, it much, I think just much more difficult. I really appreciate your story because I, I can see many, many people probably facing the same thing. So One just not sure reasons. until you kind of. Yeah. Sorry, I think there's a little delay with your, I don't know if it's your or my computer, but yeah. um, one of the reasons I was looking forward to this conversation actually is because we, you all come from so many different industries. And I think that it's easy to kind of just summarize all of you as, well, CMOs, right? So you're doing the same thing, but in fact, the challenges that you're dealing with vary dramatically. Leslie, apart from the fact that you're new in this role, I'd love to hear how you guys thought about all of these different challenges and particularly with respect to one being a financial services organization, two, you do have a very um, well-known and outspoken CEO who takes positions and so that naturally would impact you, I would think. Um, you know, you've got a number of different constituents and everything. So maybe tell us a little bit about what leadership is like in this moment for you and, and in particular being at that organization. Yeah, and I, I would tie it back to um, some of what Shade and Angela said as well about about being vulnerable and 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 really listening and making sure that we're you know we've made your gut checks and you're surrounding yourself with the right people on a number of, of decisions. I, I would break it into two things. And to your point on us being a financial services institution and with so much uncertainty, um, you know, there's 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 economic uncertainty and then there's the social issues. Um, all hitting us at the same time. And so when you think about just even the business of being in, you know, we're in the lending business um, along with deposits, investments, et cetera, but just the models that we work off of and, you know, how data is so important, certainly for, for us and what we do as, as marketers, um, you know, no models are, have, were, were ready for, you know, a, three and a half percent employment to potentially 20 plus percent unemployment back down to like, maybe it's going to be in a better shape than, you know, 10 percent ish and and bouncing around a bit for a period of time. And so I think one is is making sure that we were having those daily gut check scrum mm -hmm. sessions, surrounding yourself with the right people, being OK as being leaders and not knowing all the answers and making sure that everybody felt like their point of view was valued and and it's okay to, and, and actually it's incumbent upon us to speak up and make sure that collectively we get to that right answer um, and be ready to, to pivot uh, uh, in a quick way because our customers are, are, are needing our assistance and, um, and these are, you know, untested times. And so I think, I think it's one, just making sure that we were, you know, constantly listening, paying attention to what our customer needs were, moving very, very quickly at speed. Um, making decisions uh, without all perfect information um, and surrounding ourselves with the right people. On the 
on the do the on the social piece, Jamie, to your point on being outspoken, um, is an incredibly inspiring leader. It, truly authentic, what you see is what you get. And for him, this is not a new situation. Like we've we we're very involved in the community. We're very committed, um, you know, to racial and so social justice, et cetera. Um, but what I would say is his whole point is just do the right thing and what feels right. And are we perfect? No. Is there more to do? Yes. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I, I you know, am inspired by, by to work for him and some of the leaders are things like, you know, um, you know, publishing our workforce where we are today from a diversity and inclusion perspective and not and not hiding from the numbers and knowing that we can do more. You know, that's something that we did in May um and and are standing you know you know by those and and moving forward and more the other piece i would say is that we were we um whether it's you know the things that we're doing with the fellowship institute or advancing black, black, black pathways um we've been doing those things for a long period of time but pulling together as a team and saying there's a need to the point of inflection point there is a need for greater, there's a need for more good, and how we use our platform as a marketer. Um, I feel like we we wanted to make sure that we were sh our point of view was very clear on our social platforms, our own channels coming. You know, hashtag Blackout Tuesday, pulling down media is appropriate. Um, making sure that you know we were there not only for our customers, employees. And standing there, you know, the fact that only 18% of companies feel like they should be, you know, standing in this moment. We represent one out of two households, and those are our consumers. And we have 250,000 employees, a very diverse environment. You can't not stand up and, and, and take a stand. And so we felt very strongly on that. Right. And you, you said a lot in there, but I have to say throughout the years, I've, I've taken really great uh, bits of advice from things that Jamie has said. And I love the idea of just do the right thing. I mean, it's so human, actually. And I think people tend to kind of get stuck in their own head about, you know, analyzing and overanalyzing. How do you respond and trying to put some sort of rigorous framework to something that actually is really just about being human and doing the right thing, yep. which potentially makes your job easier. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, you don't have to comment on that. But, um, but I think, you know, you bring up this point too about as marketers, you know, thinking about your role or the role that you play for an organization and out there in the world, you know, having to make decisions about what your company does and ultimately what that statement says. So I'm, I'm curious from your perspectives, and this is, this would naturally be different from any, for every organization. Um, how much the role of the chief marketing officer is being leaned on in this moment to help direct, you know, that that conversation apart from just, you know, standard marketing things, as you will. Angela, you're nodding. Maybe you have something to add about that. Well, I, you know, I teased the other day that it seems like every meeting I'm in, I, I call it the marketing game. It's like, you know, marketing for 500. Um, it's like, you know, it's always the solution these days. But it is really part and parcel of how we communicate to the outside. And, you know, how we what we say and how we communicate it is really key. We also have, you know, we work very close with our PR group. We have um, a chief uh, communications officer now with us within Hyundai, which is great. And we've actually been collaborating pretty heavily on um, what the right messages were and, and, and did PR take it? Was it, oh, and also with HR, I should say, you know, how do we communicate with our employees? That's a little bit different than how we communicate with maybe even our dealer network, than how we maybe communicate with other partners that are part of our Hyundai ecosystem that we work with. So getting all those messages right was really important. My job was what do we say to consumers? And um, you know, like most marketers, we, we turned down our spend um, in April, uh, May, June actually was um, from a national perspective, probably our lowest month. But that was, again, in the overall goal to get us to a, a good, you know, uh, first half of the year p &L, so we can then um, hopefully get back to some sort of normal and get back to, to regular business. So um, we had to be really clever about how we do all um, the messaging we had to do. But I, I would say the, the role of marketing and the department at large in our agencies, they've been amazing. Um, we have probably put out more work and more changes to messages in this time than we generally do. And by the way, that's with no production. So right. is it our sexiest, best stuff? No, but I'll tell you what, I mean, it worked pretty hard for us, I have to say. So, you know, kudos to everyone. And um, 
I think just getting those messages right was really a heavy, a heavy responsibility. Um, so thankfully there were, I'm, I have a huge agency background. I work in collaborative teams anyway. I would never think my own thought was the thought, um, but it did take a lot of people to make it work right. But marketing was always called to, I think, play a, a very big role in everything we were doing during this time. You bring up a good point about the role of marketing evolving. Maria, since you work with so many different brands, I'd be curious to hear from your perspective how you think the role of the CMO has evolved. I'm certainly curious from anybody's perspective. Um, but having the purview that, let's say, you or I have, where we do speak to so many people across so many different industries who are wrestling and grappling with so many different challenges, um, how would you say the role of the CMO has evolved? And what are, what are the types of things that you're seeing change even you know varying industry by industry yeah i mean i for sure think that kind of the traditional brand which is what is associated with like a cmo role is is is, is a thing of the past right like but so many of us are doing so much more than just the brand work and there's just so much data and analytics and thinking about technology and how technology can fuel a business and what we can do with technology so you're you're you know i can be in a meeting in one moment with um, engineers and in the next moment with copywriters, right? Like just, you know, the, 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 the skill set is, is so much more um, varied than it used to be. And I think, you know, if you're in order to progress, you have to be able to do all of those things, right? Um, I want to actually just also go back to your first, to your very first question, right? Just around like leadership um, during this time. Um, I think also what was really key, I think, for all of us in this in this, you know, the marketing role is we were asking our teams to be thinking about like messaging and 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 positioning and, and how to keep a business forward, et cetera. And, you know, we had team members who were scared, who were, you know, trying to figure out like, you know, were their relatives going to get sick? They were trying to figure out like how to maneuver their own personal lives and children. Um, and so it was, I think, you know, when you think about um we all i think in many ways or i had can put say myself i mean i had to really put aside any of my own like fear thoughts i mean i'm here in new york city we were a hub i live in manhattan you know we were navigating all of that and you had to put all of that aside in order to lead your team in order to be getting to angela's point those messages right to be thinking about um moving a business through the most unprecedented time, right? And be thinking and, and, and focus on that. Um, and so I, I think it was truly a unique experience, but I say hats off to all of my colleagues here on this call, because I think, you know, one of the things that I've felt is that people have really leaned in to give each other advice and support one another and to say, this is what I'm seeing. Um, and so to your second question, I mean, I think a big part of the evolution of the CMO is is hearing and talking to each other, right? And 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 lifting each other up and seeing this is what this is what I'm seeing. This is what's happening because our roles are expanding so quickly. Um, we are, you know, in a in a time where we're just we're grappling with so many things in in, in a unprecedented speed, even if you will. That's right. Yeah, I think I think just to add to that, that's like spot on when you think about, you know, there. It's been a bit of time now, but there's definitely there's no traditional funnel anymore, right? I mean, it's it's always on 360, paid, owned, earned. How does it all work together? Um, you know, and it's not just about you know what's that next best offer. It's like what's the next best you know engagement or interaction? What's the content that's necessary? Um, what are people searching for? And, you know, like making sure our brands at the kitchen table in that moment, not necessarily trying to close a, a sale through a traditional funnel. And so, you know, the the need to build our muscle and or surround ourselves with the right people as it relates to leveraging data and MarTech, you know, uh, platform solutions so that we can make sure that we're as in the moment as, as relevant as possible. And then it's also just about how marketing, advertising, and communications all come together. Um, because things like even in the moment, pulling back to Angela's point, we pulled back on a lot of marketing spend. We actually increased the number of campaigns or communications or things that we were doing because it was about you know branch branch openings and uh, drive throughs and payment protection plans and what's the right what what are small businesses need in the moment from 
understanding steps one, two, and three. Those are not traditional marketing right. things as we think about like bottom line P and L, but that's also what will make sure that our brands are trusted at the end of the day. And if they're trusted, people will come. And so all of those things really need to work in concert. Um, so it's, it's certainly evolving. Okay, so build on that for a second, and we've got, um, maybe we'll sort of close with this, because I think we only have a few more minutes, but build on what you just said, because if there's no longer the tradi traditional marketing model, you come into this job and you're like, I am going to help you know, grow the awareness, strengthen the perception of my brand, and help drive um, engagement, help drive business, et cetera, et cetera, whatever your priorities are, because I know they differ for, for everybody here. Yeah. Um, how do you prioritize? How do you say, like, this is the way I'm going to work through that? And what would you tell people who are watching, you know, your job is as CMO to prioritize and thinking about investing and all the things? Yep. Maybe we could just take that after Leslie Shade if you want to jump in. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I'll no, no after you. You, got, you go ahead. I'll, and then I'll tee it up to Shade. Yeah. I, I would say, here's an, here's an example. Um, to your point of, like, like, my job is brand health across three brands, making sure we're, we're resonating and we have product awareness, et cetera, and then customer engagement. But like an example of like how we prioritize um, is listening. If you, you just have to listen to your customers, like if you listen to what customer needs are in the moment or like really relevant moments, example being what we did for show me your walk and virtual commencements um, for the class of 2020. It, you know, one of the things that, you know, it wasn't offers, it was like, we're going to prioritize in 28 days, we're going to stand up two tentpole events, because everybody, including myself, I have a graduating senior, um, is feeling like this, this sadness on not being able to graduate. And so like, like, as a financial institution, well, what's our role? Well, our role is, you know, we start, you know, students, parents, um, you know, existing customers, existing employees, it's real for everybody. And so for us, it was like, how do we pull together? We pulled 250 pieces of content together in 28 days with 40 celebrities and 150 follow million followers to celebrate that moment, which enabled us to show up with incredible relevance. But we also created content that was, you know, career development with LinkedIn. Um, what are the, the, the currency conversations that students need to know when they're graduating this moment? So we were able to, we didn't want to be, we're not, we weren't, we were relevant, but it was because this is a moment that everybody was feeling. And so how your brands show up, it's like, okay, what can we bring to the table that was all listening to what people were feeling and talking about in that moment? And we had 90% 90, 90 positive sentiment on social. And it was the number one um, uh, conversation for JP Morgan Chase since January 1st with everything going on with 90% positive sentiment. Amazing. That will pay off because we have a lot of students now coming to our landing pages for other things because they dialed into the HBCU commencing event. The last thing I'll say on relevance and content and using the right partners and players is we work closely with S and Studios. And I can tell you, it's a perfect example of, you know, making sure that we're using the right type of diverse partners, suppliers, et cetera. We would have never been able to pull off a relevant historically black college and universities event um, if we were using our traditional agencies as an example. So, like, again, um, it's just, you know, paying attention to your customer base and making sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people, um, being relevant and possible. Jay, I, I thought I made it spot on. I, the, the only thing I, I would add to that is marketing is unique in a role in the business that we are we are positioned to help the business with literally anything uh, that's that's relevant to its growth, almost other than maybe financials. So I, I think it's really important to in any sort of setting for every team member that's in marketing to go back to. Um, being bold, taking a leadership role and saying, I think we as a business need to as quickly as possible move in this direction um, because people will listen to you. There's nobody that's going to say, who is that? Like, why would marketing have an opinion on that? Because marketing touches everything in the business. And so it's just an awesome opportunity for us as marketers today to expand and evolve and take on a, a, a much stronger leadership role in the organization, but also in society as businesses need to adapt to serve a purpose and to create meaning in people's lives. It's just, it's just a great time to be a marketer. I love that. 
Maria, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, I would, you know, I think everything, you know, Leslie and Sheed have said is, it, it's, is for sure spot on. Um, I do think, though, right this moment, one of the key lessons here is really about the ability to be able to pivot quickly and adapt to whatever the environment is. So as you are thinking about your priorities and what makes the most sense, um, one of the key learnings for us going through our process of how do we want to re-engage with, um, with our clients was understanding that the country was opening back up in, 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 in different ways. And so there was not going to be a one size fits all message, right? We couldn't do that. We needed to be very, um, you know, attuned to what was happening for people in their lives based upon where they are. And so this, this ability to um, be adaptable quickly and, and be able to pivot and adjust, you know, I think, you know, kind of the days of like these marketing documents that are set in stone and then you just kind of, you know, execute against them is like a thing of the past, right? It really is about creating an agile approach so that as your consumers are going through something different, you can meet them where they are, right? So that you can really be listening and addressing the needs of them at that moment and that it's authentic to your brand at the same time, right? So all of those things um, needing to connect the dots on all of that um, in any given moment, I think is really key to for marketers to be successful moving forward um, and for our ability to lift our brands quickly through any kind of crisis, whether it be something like a Black Lives Matter or COVID-19, right? The, the ability to have your brand be relevant in that moment is, is really crucial um, because I do think we're going to see more and more where businesses need to take a stand around social issues, need to take a stand. It may be around political issues. I mean, I just I think more and more consumers are demanding that the brands they buy something from has a position on something. Right. They, they want and they want to know what is your position on this? Because if I'm going to give you my money, I want to make sure I'm giving my money to someone who stands for something I believe in, too. And I think the Gen Z's are leading that charge. And so brands need to be attuned to that and, and marketers are going to be the ones to make sure make sure brands deliver on it. That's right. Angela, bring us home. Well, I, I, I just loved what you said, Maria. I could not agree more. And, and Leslie and Shade, too. You know, one thing in the auto business for us, I mean, as a marketer in that organization, you know, our dealers are also a, a, an audience for us. And they're really important to us because they deliver that experience to the customer. And one thing that was interesting through the pandemic was we saw a lot of behavior change as and to your point about the country is not the same, totally different in California, New York to how things were still, I mean, we had some dealerships in some regions that were have year over year gains, oddly. Um, but people still had income, they still had, they took advantage of incredible incentives that everybody jumped in on, just trying to keep business going. So if you were in the need for a car and you had stable income, I mean, good for you. You took advantage of probably the best time to get a car. But you know, it was all about uh, the fact that, you know, the whole world has moved on to a lot of digital tools on how to do online shopping, paperwork, and even at this point, you know, home delivery, if you didn't, you couldn't go to a dealership. Um, many, many, many were closed. So it really forced, I would say, a lot of our dealers who had been slower to adopt uh, this new way that customers expect to, you know, shop and buy with every other industry were one of the last to change. It really pushed it and 100% of our dealers now are on all of our digital retailing tools. So there's online paperwork. Um, you can, uh, we have live um, demos that happen on our, our website because you couldn't go to the dealership. You can do the paperwork online and then you can take home delivery and have it, the card actually sent to your home uh, if that's what you want. I think as we open up, People will want to go kick the tires at a dealership and want to see the car. That's the that's the best thing. Who doesn't want to not see a car before you buy it? But I think everything else about that process is going to be much more about how people shop and buy every other time. And I would say, as a marketer, we we really wanted to move on that quickly and and bring our dealers up to speed and say this was the time to do this. And to their credit, what an incredible group of individuals who just pivoted so quickly. Um, who some of them had some really, really big challenges. And so I would say, you know, just being willing to jump in, going for it, adopting, 
um, and, and just trying to everything from whether it's in your internal constituents to your external ones. Um, I just think the flexibility and the willing to just try and fail quickly, I think was um, a really good learning during this time. So thank you so much. Perfect. Well, all of you, thank you. That was well said. I might do two seconds of a wrap up, if you will, because there was some really great advice in there. And this is uh, just a little bit of what I got here. Listen to your customers, um, be bold and go for it. Use each other to learn and listen. That is critical. And I have to say in the past few months, I have found that I have leaned into my relationships with people more than ever before and listened and learned. And I feel like every day is a new moment for that. Um, pivot quickly and adapt to the new environments that we're in. The ability to have your brand be relevant in the moment of crisis is crucial. Um, marketing is positioned to help the business with anything. I love that you said that, Shane. Um, there is no one size fits all approach. And finally, just to quote uh, Jamie for you, Leslie, do the right thing. I love that. So in this crazy world where everything is changing, your perspective really, really matters. Thank you all for joining us. I hope everybody who watched got a lot out of this. I know I did. Have a Thank great day, everybody. Thanks, Haley. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you.